The Grow My Cleaning Company podcast helps owners of cleaning companies just like you to grow your company and yourself so you can make more money and finally get the time and money freedom that probably got you into this business. Discover how to automate and create systems that allow you to grow like crazy without losing control. If you dig the show and want to show some love, subscribe, rate, and review on iTunes. It really helps. Enjoy the show. Hello, Cleaning Nation. This is part one in a two-part episode. Stay tuned for the next episode for part two. Enjoy. All right, everybody. Well, let's get started. Let's get this party started. Today, we are going to talk about goals. And we all know, you know, listen, we get that word tossed around a lot, goals. We got to set goals. And you know, it was funny. I want to tell you a little funny story before we get officially started. I have a girlfriend who I've been friends with for a long time. And we were talking about goals the other day. And I shared with her that I was going to talk to all of you amazing, beautiful people about goal setting. And she said, you know, I'm, I'm going to confess something that's really unpopular. And I said, oh, what's that? She said, I hate goals. <laughs> she said, I, I just have to tell you, I hate goals. And I said, really? And I, I would have never guessed because she's, you know, she's a su- successful businesswoman and I've known her for a long time. I just would have never thought that she would say something like that. And I said, well, why do you hate goals? And she said, you know, I hate goals because I guess I'm, I really feel like a free spirit and I like to go with the flow. And, and I don't know, every time I, I, write down something and I set my intentions or I I write a goal out. I don't know. There's something apart part of me that feels constricted or bad, or, you know, like if I don't make it, then I beat myself up. And I said, okay, so really it's not that you hate goals. It's that you hate the way that you've done goals in the past because everybody, listen, we all set goals, whether we call them goals or not every time you want something. Okay. When I, when I was looking, where is it? I don't even have it here. Oh my gosh. I must be crazy. I I was going to grab my phone, but I don't have my phone. (laughs) I was going to show you my phone. I had a, an idea of the phone I wanted and I researched and I looked and I was like, okay, that's the phone I want. Well, that was a goal my goal was to have a phone that had certain functionality and did certain things. And that was a goal. We don't call those things goals, but that's what it was. When I set out and I went to the, the um, T-Mobile store, I knew what I wanted. I you know talked to the, So that was a goal. And when I accomplished that goal, when I bought the phone, I took it home, I was so happy. So goals are not something that should make us feel bad. It should never, goals should never make us feel constricted or restricted. Exactly the opposite. Your goals should empower you. They should make you feel inspired every day and should help you guide your actions and your intentions and your focus and um, and the actions that you're taking every day so that you get what you want in life. Even if they're micro goals, they don't have to be big, huge, audacious. I think that's what she was talking about. She was like, oh man, you know, first of the year and everybody has these big, oh my gosh, I'm going to make a million dollars this year and I'm going to lose 50 pounds and I'm going to run a marathon and I'm going to, you know, and I get it. If that's the, your version, your thought about goals, then today, hopefully my, my goal is to help you redefine goals for yourself. Think of it like this. This is your blueprint, your way to get whatever it is you want. And if what you want is a feeling or quality of life, then let this be the experience that helps you just be a little more specific about what that is. Okay, give it language, give it a little bit of structure so you can be free to live into that goal. Okay, so do we all have, raise your hand if you're ready to have goals that make you go wild. (laughs) It's a goals gone wild, right? Okay, right. That's why we called, that's why I called today goals gone wild. 
because that's how you should feel when you see them. Here's the, the bottom line. The reason that you, you have for making goals and the general just consensus of when you write something down, it's real. It's, it tends to be more specific when you write it down. That's interesting. Have you ever found that when you actually have to write something out, your brain works in a different way. You start asking yourself more detailed questions about it. You feel sort of obligated to give it more, like you wouldn't write down, I want to lose weight as a goal. If you, if you wrote it down, you probably look at it and go, well, that's kind of thin, ha <laughs> ha. Pun intended. Um, that's <laughs> it's not quite enough. Well, I need to be more specific. Well, how much weight? How much weight do I? When do I want to uh, lose it by? Things like that. So we write down our goals for all the reasons you just said, and it activates something in our brain. Our brains are wired that way. When we see it, when we um, take the action of writing it out specifically. All those things help us stay focused. All right. So let's just dive into what is a goal and how is it different than a vision or just a desire? So when we have these ideas in our head, right? We How many people have like millions of ideas throughout the month and like lots of ideas, lots of desires? Anybody besides me that has lots of ideas? Yeah. Okay. So, so what's the difference between a goal and an idea or just a desire? A distinction between a goal and a desire is starts with specificity. So it has to be specific. Have you ever noticed that when you have an idea, it's kind of like all over the board here. It's like, it's kind of non-specific and you're like, well, it's kind of like this and it feels kind of like that. And it would be really cool. And, but if you had to really, you know, hone it in, you're like, yeah, it's, it doesn't really have a lot of structure. It just sounds like a really cool, nifty idea. Goals start with specifics. Okay. So that's the very first thing about goals. So how many of you have heard the term smart, smart goals? How many people have heard of smart goals? Okay. All right. For those of you who have not heard this, this is going to be awesome. So I want you to write this down because this is the framework we're going to use for today. Smart goals. The S is for specific. So that's where we start. It needs to be specific. All right. The M is for measurable. So you have to be able to measure along the way. Okay. So there's benchmarks and you should be able to see very easily whether you're, so if you want to lose 50 pounds and you say, I want to lose 50 pounds in six months. Now you're making it measurable. If you say, all right, 25 or 50 pounds in six months, that's just under, you know, I don't have a calculator, but it's just under 10 pounds a month. And that's, mm, you know, two pounds, maybe two to three pounds a week. Okay. So now we're met. There's measurements there. There's a metrics. There's some way to tell whether or not I'm going to hit that goal. Because if I'm five months in, and I haven't, I haven't dropped a pound. How, how likely do you think it's going to be that I'm going to make that goal in a month? Mm -hmm. Yeah, probably not. Right. Okay. So it needs to be measurable. All right. So the next part of the smart goal is a, and in this case, we're going to call this aligned, aligned with your bigger why. It's aligned with your bigger purpose, your bigger why. And we're going to talk about that more today. Okay. And your core values. The R in SMART goals is realistic and reachable by you. So what I mean by that is you have the control. If too much of the control of your goal is outside of your control and outside of your influence, then I would argue that that would be a, I, it would be a goal I would reframe somehow and 
make it fit within the control that you have. Because if you have too many variables that are outside of your control and it's a goal, I mean, we have, we've all been there, right? Where we go, okay, I have a goal that involves five other people and they all have to agree. And they, this person has to do that. And then this other person has to do that. And blah, 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 and, and that's the way I'm going to reach this goal. And like, good luck with that. Because no. Now, if your goal then is I, as part of this team, of five people, let's say, I'm going to do X, Y, Z. My personal goal is to accomplish this, this, and this for the bigger end goal that I am hoping, I'm wanting, my intention is to have to reach this. This is my part in it. I will do that. See, now that is reasonable. That is reachable by you. Okay, so be very careful when you're making goals that especially those of you who work with partners or family members or spouses, that (laughs) your personal goals don't obligate someone else to do something they haven't personally committed to and personally said, yes, this is important to me. Okay, be very careful. All right. And then the T in SMART goals is for time, timeline. You have a timeline, okay? So you don't make a goal where you just go, hey, I want to... I want to run a 5K marathon, which for me would be a lot. So I'm sure those runners out there are like, what? 5K? I do that every morning. Yeah, well, for me, that would take a long time. But let's just say, I I want to run a 5K marathon. Okay. What's wrong with that goal? (laughs) Anybody can tell me what's wrong with that? Anybody? Like, it's measurable, a 5K marathon. uh, marathon is measurable, but what is it missing? When yes, exactly? Okay. Yes. When? When? No timeline. By when? Like okay, I could die with that goal <laughs> because I'm just like, well, I don't know in the afterlife in heaven. I don't know. We it was undefined. So um, they your smart your goals have to be smart because all of those criteria need to be made. Okay. (laughs) You'll die with that goal. (laughs) Yeah. I might die from that goal. I'm just saying if it were me, that's not on my bucket list, by the way, (laughs) I have no aspirations. (laughs) Sarah and I are like, nope, no, we'll we'll sit there with a big thing of popcorn and we'll watch all of you reach that goal. We're good. (laughs) So, okay. So now we know smart goals. So today we're going to be talking about that in that context. So it all starts with your why. When you're thinking of a goal, how many of you already have a goal in mind? One goal. Doesn't matter what life structure. Yeah? Everybody have a goal that they're thinking about? Okay. So if you don't have a goal yet, think about this. There's, there are life structures that I would like you to choose a topic on. One is personal, right? It's health. It's your, um, and that health can be wellness. It can be mental wellness. It can be emotional. It can be spiritual. Anything that is personal to you, okay, that can be a goal. It could be professional. It could be your business, business goals. That's why we're all here. We talk about business goals and some aspect of business. It could be relationship goals. It could be that you want to have a better relationship or some furtherment of a relationship, friendship, spouse, children, whatever. And this is an interesting goal because it has to still pass the SMART test. Okay. So saying, I want to have a better relationship with my spouse, well, that's not specific. It's not measurable, right? And it doesn't have a timeline. Now, it's achievable by you only on your half. (laughs) So, right? So, 
some of the the um, life structures that I think are a little more challenging is ones that don't inherently have like numbers involved or are very clear benchmarks, right? But I still don't want you to feel like you can't make goals for life structures that aren't the soft topics, right? Like relationships, okay? Or spirituality. That's another one. It's like, I want to have a better, richer spiritual life or relationship with God. That still can fall into this criteria of SMART goal. You can choose activities and things that you will do and commit to that make that a SMART goal. Okay? All right. So, let's start with our why. Why is this goal important to you? Now, this is where we go to this, the heart of you know, sometimes we make goals, frankly, for a whole bunch of reasons. We think, well, this is what I'm supposed to do. You know, this is what my family expects of me. This is my role in life. This is, I'm a, I'm a business owner. So, of course, I have to have goals. And, and honestly, if we're making goals from that perspective, from the perspective of, well, I'm supposed to, well, I have to, well, this is just my job or whatever. We're never going to feel the kind of connection that makes your goals gone wild, right? We want your goals to be something that you're wildly invested in. There's a why behind it. So a goal is a commitment. That's one of the big distinctions. And when we decide, decide, we decide, we choose and we decide and we take action, that is a huge difference between just vision and desire and hopes and dreams and a goal. So love that. Thank you, Renee. You're welcome. Did I answer your questions? Yes, you did. Thank you. Excellent. Thanks, guys. (laughs) All right. Okay. So here's our task. We're going to take a few minutes right now. I don't have any music to play, unfortunately. I would have, you know, if I had it together, I would have had some music, but I don't. And you don't want to hear me sing. Trust me. So (laughs) I will be quiet and you will do um, two things. Well, three things, but it's really all one. One, write down your goal. Make sure it passes the SMART test. Is it specific? Is it measurable? Is it aligned with your why? Is it reachable by you? And is does it have a timeline? So you're going to write down your goal. And if you get done in time and you want extra credit, what's your why? Why is that important? All right. So if you don't have or don't feel like you have a smart goal yet this is something that after the call today sit with this and spend some time with it and then run it past somebody in the group someone else share it with someone okay because that's that next step when you share first of all it if you have to explain it in you know further detail that means that you haven't gone quite far enough with your own explanation so write it in a way that if somebody else were to pick up your paper they would automatically know what it was you they would it would be specific you they would see how it was measurable they would see how it was aligned with your why they could see how it was um, reasonable because you're responsible for you have direct responsibility and they would be able to see the timeline. So write it out as if someone else were going to read it. Okay. That will help give you clarity. All right. So now we get to go to the next fun step. So the why is us first. Okay. Our own why. And then it's who else will it benefit? Most of you probably have goals that involve your family, that involve other people. I would also add to this descriptions about what it's going to be like for the other people. Why is this important to them? What is, how will their lives, like Renee was very specific about how her daughter's life would be enriched and in what ways and how amazing that would be and all the experiences she has, she will have. And I want you to do that for your goals too, because a lot of the times we kind of get up in our head and we're just 
putting our head down and working hard and just hustle and grind. And we forget, you know, there's other people that what we're doing or not doing has an impact on. And I want you to have that emotional connection to the other people. So Johanna had definitely had woven in other people. So really write out like what each one of those family members, children, soon to be husband, you know, what are the, what, what would their life be like? What would their experience be like? Because when you're in that moment, as Renee said, you had 20 people sign up for your dang interview and nobody showed up. Okay, probably time to pull out and look at the vision board, look at your goals and read what you wrote about why. Why am I doing this? Okay, yeah, that's why. All the people that it's going to benefit, that's why. All right, so make that so much more compelling than the monkey mind. Because remember, the monkey mind has a lot more screen time with most of us. Like that monkey mind is like chattering away in the background all the time. It just never stops. So we got to have a great, rich connection story to our goals. All right. And for those of you who are like, now I'm just kind of analytical and I, I just give me something to do and I'll do it. (laughs) I could probably point to half a dozen without even knowing any of you of goals that I would bet at one time or another you made and did not achieve. And it probably has to do with something like six six pack abs, bikini. I'm just saying most of us (laughs) have not quite hit the goals at some point in our life. Okay. So, so there's an emotional reason we need to have connection. Okay. So the next part is end, uh, start with the end in mind. And I call this the sandwich strategy. So what, we're, what I mean by that is when you look at your goals, one of the things that happens a lot of the time is we start to get overwhelmed because it's not just one goal, is it? It's the goal while we're running a business and we're taking care of our family and we're, we've got pets and we have, right, and, 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 and then you start looking at this goal and going, whew, okay, that's a lot. It feels big. It feels really big. So how do we not, how do we resist that monkey mind urge to pull us into overwhelm? Okay, this is where we start. We start with the end in mind. So we've already talked about that a little bit, but now we're going to contextualize it. What's the very last step? What would be the very last step in your goal achievement? Think about that for a minute. What would be the last step with a last piece that you could identify? Okay, it's done. Now it's done. What would that be? Write it down. What's the very last step of the goal? Okay, write that down. And be specific. If the last step sounds something like, um, I'm I'm trying to think of a goal that I could have in mind, Um, buy the house. You're like, "Mm, no, that's too big. It, there's there's micro steps in that, right? It was like the last step could be for Johanna. Um, I open my bank account and I see the exact number of dollars that I see it right there on the screen, X amount of dollars, and it's there and it's available. It's not tied up. It's uh, liquid. I, it's, you know, whatever the case may be, right? I have total access to this X dollar amount. See, now that's specific. You're like, oh, the last step would be buy my house. No. So if your last step isn't specific, then think about that for a couple more minutes and write down the specific last step. 
Well, here we are, the end of the podcast, and you made it. Great job. Uh, I've got a little bonus for you before for sticking through with me, but like I mentioned before, if you got value out of this podcast and you want to show a little love, subscribe, rate, and review on iTunes, Spotify, wherever the heck you're listening to this thing. Share with a friend. Share the love. And as a special thank you for those of you that stuck with me to the end, how about I give you my personal phone number so we can text? It's a great way for me to get to know you, your business, your goals personally. So shoot me a text now, 602-932-6431. That's 602-932-6431. I am the only one who responds to these texts, and I will personally respond to everyone I possibly can as long as uh, this number is manned. I don't know how long we're going to keep this at the end of the podcast, so grab it now. 602-932-6431. Give me a text. Say hey. Can't wait to meet you.